Hey guys, it's Mathel here once again, and with my latest character, I have taken upon the challenge of playing Frostblades of Catabasis, which is basically just a cold dot scaling um, melee attack, or range slash melee attack, that is, I'd say, basically the best and newest meta for cold dot, if you want to do any cold dot action, and it is really smooth. So I was inspired by um, someone in my chat, PSL, he's got a build that had um, Frostblades of Catabasis as an occultist, and um, based off of, loosely based off of his build with Aegis Aurora, I decided to make something kind of similar, and uh, it is pretty damn buttery smooth. I would be surprised if this isn't the um, just thickest character I've ever played in general, but on top of that could just end up being the smoothest um, tier 17 farmer I'll have all league and uh, maybe even build of the league, who knows. As you can see, building with Aegis Aurora is still pretty insane in modern PoE. Um, what you've got is gaining some energy shield back based off of your armor every time you block, and this character is built into maximum um, attack block and almost maximum spell block which I will I think have soon as well and that is with glancing blows so you stack a lot of armor you stack some block you get decent amount of energy shield uh, in this build I've also gone for 90 max res for all three of my resists with melding of the flesh um, and then yeah you get good energy shield back whenever you block and as long as the hits are less overall than you know what you're gonna um, recover back, you become pretty much unkillable. As far as the actual damage portion of the build, so Frostblades of Catabasis, you attack like normal with Frostblades and then it leaves a cold dot trail and it, in this case at the moment, does something like 2-3 to three million DPS, just the trail itself. Um, you can only alter it with extra strikes, so, you know, originally you just have one strike, one hit, one little cold dot trail, no area scaling on it whatsoever. Um, so if you get extra strikes, so Ancestral Call or extra strikes from other sources like Ancestral Cry, um, or let's see uh gloves mastery that sort of stuff then you just shoot out more of these cold dot trails which don't overlap or anything but there's just more of them so it does become a bit better for clear uh, the other special thing about this is that it's not scaling like a traditional spell. It does still scale with gem levels very heavily, but for cold damage over time on this skill, um, attack damage uh, or cold damage with attacks and elemental damage with attacks works as well. So I am using things like elemental damage with attacks support gem, I am scaling elemental damage with attacks on various portions of gear, and that does give you cold damage over time. So it's a bit of a weird skill to scale, but it does I think make it a bit uh, different to the usual damage over time uh, spells because you're not scaling spell damage at all but you are scaling some other stuff which is typically easier to find uh, at least on gear and stuff um, so it's been going really well and uh, as you can see nigh unkillable at the moment uh, I don't think I've actually died since putting my setup together um, just you know while leveling with fucking minus resists and shit like that but since actually mapping and I've just been doing thick juicy mapping whatever I want to do uh, took on a 100% delirium map with you know um, some crazy shit doesn't matter I think this will be a build that can do some tier 17 safely nicely and um, rather smoothly and uh, Hopefully that's what I'll have for you in the next video, some end game and some tier 17s and stuff. Uh, for now it's just a bit of a, you know, still starting video. If this doesn't take on some good solid tier 17s, I don't know, fuck the whole system. We'll see. But for now, I thoroughly can recommend some Frostblades of Catabasis if you got the gear for it, because it does need a bit of scaling to properly take off. I'm not sure it's too much of a like start a build situation. Uh, so with that, let me just go ahead and show you what it's taken to get this character this far so far. So what we've got here is currently level 93 Frost Frog's Blade of Cata Baserg. Um, frogs, emotes, Baserg, uh, Frog Emote, yep. Um, 93 Occultist and um, yeah, 6.2k ES. Uh, you can see we've got a you know, war crack going off constantly that is currently um, ancestral cry so that just gives us extra attacks sometimes um, and it, it's fairly reliable um, it's not super important if you just get some extra attacks somewhere like the gloves 
like I do here. Um, you don't have to have this going off, but it does make things a bit smoother. Uh, we are based around Frost Blades of Catabasis. So here it is, 12,700 base cold damage per second over time. And um, yeah, skill cannot be bonified by uh, area, but it still gets area damage as well because the uh, ground dot counts as like area. So if you have increased area damage, in this case, conch effect, uh, it does give us more damage. Um, so if you attack like this, as you can see, nothing's happening. You have to connect with an enemy, but it also works if you connect with a hydrosphere. So if you really want, you can hydrosphere, attack it, and then it'll you know generate a cold dot ground. Uh, I was using hydrosphere up till this point, um, but now that I've got my own cold exposure on gloves, it's not really necessary. I don't really need it to like connect with, you know, to pre do a ground dot. Um, if I was squishier, yep, that might be a thing, but currently I don't really need it in the build. So we've got frost blades, we've got attached to Ellie damage with attacks, uh, empower level three, conch effect, um, Ellie focus level five, and then swift affliction currently level five as well. Um, what else did I need to say specifically? I was using Ancestral Coal um, as a uh, gem support almost the entire time up till very recently until I got this setup going. So um, if you want, you can use that for a long time um, and then swap in early damage with attacks for single target. Uh, I am built around um, Skin of the Lords kind of at the moment. So 100% global defense means that you get a lot of armor from that and also scaling all of your energy shield on your character um, instead of having any on your chest to begin with. The big upside here is that we get plus two socketed gems. So that helps for our frost blades and also for our empower. So it ends up being pretty big um, extra socket gain. And then we've got a resolute technique one to make sure that we don't need any accuracy in the build, which I thought would be a pretty good thing. But in the end, my passive tree, it's gone through several revisions. In the end, currently my passive tree is over here and getting resolute technique is like three points. So it's not a big deal if we change skin of the Lords or, you know, to a different, um, keystone altogether or if we did a different chest that did like plus two or plus two plus two so lots of pluses and stuff so i'd say it's pretty flexible but plus gems really scales frost blades hard so you do want like to go hard with um plus skill gems in your uh build we can still get another plus one with a level 21 gem we can get another plus one with a level four in power so level 32 is about where i could max this thing out uh with my current setup um, so then we are also built around Aegis Aurora. Pretty good stuff. Recover energy shield 2% of armor when you block. Currently my armor is 32k, uh, 48k when I'm with flasks. And my flasks should be up pretty much all the time. I have got them to um, generate charges when I'm hit, which happens quite often um, when I'm getting you know hit with blocks and stuff. Because uh, I'm built around glancing blows. I've got all the attack block stuff. I've got some spell block and I will... Probably finish it off with some um, Discipline Watcher spell block to get my last little bit, uh, which is almost capped as well. You can see I've got currently also 85 to all resist. If I have my Sapphire Flask up, I'm at 90 max to all resist because I am using a melding of the flesh. Uh, minus 4 max and then minus a bunch of resists. And then I stack resists basically on all my gear to... Um, make sure that I can get by with, uh, you know, melding of the flesh. Uh, I grabbed a Dodra's Damning that has a bunch of resist and stuff. This thing was 60C. Um, this thing was like 100C, plus one, plus two for Syntrax, uh, with the Determination Enlightened level three over here. Uh, Purity Vice, which is the main source of all my max res, and then Discipline, which gives me quite a lot of energy shield because I'm scaling or effect as well. Uh, we've got a plus three Dragon Flights. We've got your run-of-the-mill basic bitch hubris that came from graveyard crafting so stack a bunch of increased defense modifiers get some tier rating eliminate mana and life by you know three or four corpses each uh, and then yep some resist rolls pretty easy stuff uh, and then i unluckily rolled rarity on this thing so it kind of sucks, but altogether, yep, still gives us a lot of resists. Uh, and then these I just grabbed Fractured and put some dense fossils into. Uh, and um, I'm using a Nebulous at the moment in the build. So it gives me 20 cold damage per one cold over 75 uh, for my max. So when I do have my Sapphire Flask up, I do gain damage. As you can see, currently my tooltip is 1.47 um, million 
cold damage over time. Once I get to max res, I'm at 1.6 million. So I'm using this thing for a lot of cold damage and then it's also cold damage over time implicit. Uh, realistically, a really good scepter would be better, like, you know, big cold damage over time and elemental damage and damage over time, that sort of thing. But this thing is a pretty nice starter. Um, it does attack pretty slow, but you can kind of get used to it. And then having, you know, some flask with attack speed helps out. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's just a lot of cold damage to begin with. Um, aside from that, what else do we need to mention? Uh, we got a Frost Blink, we got a Hydrosphere, which I'm no longer going to be using. I'm using Malevolence as well. I'm triple aura, triple cursing, so punishment is just a self curse. I've got Frostbite on hit, so I grabbed a Ratcheting Ring, slammed a Redeemer on this thing, and then just went to town with caster rerolls on um, Harvest until I got some resists and strength, which I needed as well. Um, so I frostbite on hit, and that's how I get good chaos pops. I then use um, cursed ground Ellie weakness versus you know certain situations um, that help. So strong boxes, harbingers, etc. And then I sometimes curse punishment myself. Um, and then over here we've got bone chill with creeping frost. I will probably have a molten shell as my last support here. Um, Apparently I don't have it, it hasn't really been necessary, but to take bigger hits, it will probably help out in the long run. Um, and then as for the passive tree, it is still very weird. I'm not super happy with it. I might revise it to go through here or through there or something. Um, but at the moment we are getting, you know, some extra block and mana regen there. Um, I am using this melding. I have got a lot of the usual stuff over here. And then I'm using a elegant hubris that gives me um, in general, it needs to give me some cold damage with attacks and some minion damage if I want extra damage scaling from this type of a situation. So I've got one here, one there, one there, um, some resists, another cold damage with attacks, and then some aura effect. Uh, there will be a lot that you can get that, you know, just try to make sure you're getting something like two points uh, instead of, you know, going, um, let's say, the three point route because you're just being more efficient that way. But yeah, there'll be a lot that have cold damage. There'll be a lot that have minion damage. Uh, aura scaling is good too. Um, so, you know, chop and choose. 80% armor is really nice too for two points. Um, and then we're also utilizing the new gem here, 6% cold damage uh, with this thing, um, with all passives in this radius. Uh, what it's currently giving us, 1.47 million tooltip, 1.31 million. So it's a good sizable increase of, I don't know, 10, 15%. Not a bad gem at all in this situation. Uh, and then I'm using the minion nodes to turn minion damage for myself and minion attack speed for myself as well. So that's how my attack speed doesn't fully suck at the moment. Um, but yeah, also running Divine Shield for more thickness and also recover 5% ES over one second when you take Fizz damage. Uh, I've also got this mastery for Fizz taken as chaos because um, we are CI and CI means that you yep, you have basically um, immune to chaos damage. So anything taken as chaos is going to be insane. You can run like an incandescent heart if you want for more elemental thickness. Uh, you don't have to necessarily go, yeah, the max res route. Uh, it is just a more difficult way of building um, all of your resists and thickness. But in the end, um, it is creating a pretty damn thick character. I'll have the POB in the um, post, and I think it's going to have the highest EHP I've ever had. And yeah, the gameplay has been pretty fucking face roll. I've had a good time with it, though, because uh, cold damage over time or damage over time in general, when it's smooth, is really smooth. And uh, so far it has been pretty good. It's not the biggest DPS. Bosses at the late game will probably take some time, but it will be smooth, I think. So with that, I'm pretty damn happy with it so far. If you want to see just one example of Frostblades and Catabases, here it is, but there are others as well. Um, cold damage over time scales real well with the Cultist and the Cold Pops do make things, um, not the Cold Pops, the Occultist Pops do make things way nicer to clear. If I didn't have this, I'd say the build would be way less fun, um, but still fairly effective. It's just that this is nicer clear and also way more fun. Um, there's a the character for now, hopefully big tier 17 action in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. See you guys next time.